rush of blood to your head. All right, let's talk about the greatest thing that has ever come out of Canada. We talk about those three weird guys. This Jetty Lee with his unbelievable bass mastery and the keyboard sometimes and the singing and then there's the the really emotional one with the weird sense of humor Alex Lifeson playing his guitar things sometimes very delicate and beautiful and sometimes freaking heavy almost borderline heavy metal and then there's the drummer the professor uh, with his books constantly reading and thinking using his brain and you know well that's some cool stuff pretty much everyone knows Rush um, unfortunately they have retired uh, some years ago but I'm gonna talk about my favorite albums anyway and some other weird shit that I have from them they released their first album in 1974 uh, they had a different drummer back then. I think he's here. That other guy, Rotsi, I think was his name. Um, kind of sounds like Led Zeppelin, so not quite my favorite album. Um, I'm not a huge Led Zeppelin fan anyway, and anyways, Led Zeppelin does that better. However, on their second album, 1975, Fly By Night, you can see professor here in his rightful place and you got all those concepts and things happening already with Anthem and uh, Bytor and the Snow Dog, a really cool album. Uh, especially the A-side is really strong on that one. Then they released another album in 1975, Caress of Steel. That's kind of a weird one. Um, some songs are great, some kind of weird. Uh, I would say it's a very interesting album Perhaps uh, not their best, but, you know, some cool stuff here. Also, there's a bootleg video from that tour floating around the interwebs. So if you want to check that one out, it's kind of a mishmash, but it's definitely from that era. You can see all the backgrounds and all that stuff. So that's some pretty rare stuff there. Uh, I think I have that one somewhere floating around, but it's not an official release, though. This is the big one, 1976, 2112, and they start their kimono face and look kind of silly here. Um, definitely a very cool album, one of their best, absolutely. They also released a live album, I think it's also from 1976, if memory serves me correct. And it's a cool one with all the, you know, all the pictures from the live shows and all that. Definitely a big growing time for Rush when they really developed into a very nice direction. I should have that vinyl somewhere floating around. Yeah, here, Rush 2112. It's pretty much, pretty much a must have if you're into Rush. Definitely get that album on CD or LP form or whatever. Um, here's a rarity I forgot about uh, earlier. This is, I think, from their first or second tour. There's some kind of rare stuff here, like Fancy Dancer and Bad Boy and Garden Road. Um, you can also see it's kind of this pearl white vinyl. So it's kind of nice, I guess. Uh, then we get to my, probably my favorite album from them, Farewell to Kings. If nothing else, just listen to Xanadu. That is magical. If I can only choose one song, that might be it. My all-time favorite song. And we're not even talking about a metal band here. We're talking about progressive rock band. So it kind of seems like they are... Um, getting over genre um, limits and all that. I'm usually into, really all my favorite bands are usually about heavy metal, but Rush is the exception. Not really heavy metal, progressive rock, maybe even progressive proto-metal on some of their songs. Certainly, maybe some of their albums even, but not really a metal band in any shape or form. A very cool band, so definitely listen to Rush 
If you don't like any rush, you're probably a little dead inside. There's something wrong with you, so check out, check out rush. Here's Farewell to Kings in the picture disc form. I think this is some kind of Japanese edition. So that's pretty cool. Um, here's their follow-up album, Hemispheres from 1978. I would say 2112 and Farewell to Kings and Hemispheres, they're all classic stuff. Wonderful progressive rock, really cool stuff. Um, here's the original picture vinyl from is it 1979, 1978, 1978, yeah, the same year they released that one. So this is a pretty, pretty cool one. Definitely, I would recommend getting this if you're into vinyl stuff. Uh, also, um, there are some really cool bootlegs floating around from this era. This is from the Hemispheres tour and this has pretty much the perfect set list. You get Anthem, you get Passage to Bangkok, Baitar and the Snowdog, Xanadu, Something for Nothing, The Trees, Cygnus X1, Cygnus X1 Book 2, aka Hemispheres. You get Circumstances, Farewell to King, Slavila Strangiata, 2112. Everything you could really hope for. All the long epic songs are still here, pretty much almost played in their entirety. I think there's some little things they have cut from um, Baitor and the Snow Dog, the ending and, and stuff like that. But it still pretty much has all the epics. So I would really urge you to get um, some kind of material from this tour. It has the perfect set list. Everything you want to hear pretty much is there. No bad songs and they still just about could squeeze in their set all those wonderful, important songs. Later on, they had so much material, they had to cut some stuff out. So that's, that's the perfect set list. Then we get to the 1980s, 1980 actually. This is uh, Permanent Waves, very cool album. It's a bit on the soft side. It's not quite as heavy, but it's still a very, very cool album. Um, and there's some material they've released from that tour uh, from Kiel Auditorium. So we got this one um, with nice, I think, sparkling blue vinyl. So that's kind of nice. And the other uh, section of that same concert is here called Radio Waves with this kind of, I don't know, brownish, orangish vinyl thing. Uh, stone effect vinyl, they call it. So that's quite nice. Um, they have also released this unofficially um, as a bootleg. A Spirit of the Airwaves, if you can find this uh, album looking like this or looking like that. That might be the same deal. Uh, it's, it's from that Kiel Auditorium show, so it's the same show as those vinyls. Really cool track list. Pretty much all the stuff. Uh, I think they took a couple of songs and put them on their follow-up live album, uh, Exit Stage Left. But here you can find all those other songs. So it's, it's a really, really good set list uh, also. So um, I would recommend. Also, the sound uh, is brilliant because they really kind of officially recorded these and were thinking about releasing a live album. Uh, and it sounds like it. It's really cool sounding. So if you're not into bootlegs at all, get this one though. It sounds really good. I think it sounds better than Exit Stage Left even. Um, Exit Stage Left sounds kind of a little bit too clean for my taste. And they got the, um, the um, sound going up and down in between songs. So I don't like that too much. Uh, here's the big one, Moving Pictures, definitely a classic album. Um, that really needs no introduction from 1981 and then they released this live album Exit Stage Left. Uh, I was a bit disappointed when I heard it myself because you know um, the songs are drawn from different concerts and it doesn't feel like a whole concert but luckily that's been repaired. If you are aware there are these new remasters so this is from 2012 it's a really nice one 
and there's actually a DVD here so you can get to see the band uh, in black and white and the picture quality isn't the best but still you get to see them performing these five songs Bastille Anthem Lakeside Park sorry six songs 2112 fly by night in the mood definitely I would recommend this remaster even if it might be a bit expensive it's a really cool one get it um, and they of course have another box set from 2112 um, the one with the comic or cartoon whatever you want to call it you know this drawn pictures here um, some other stuff as well pictures of the band and um, I think all the lyrics are mentioned here and then there's the uh, the section where they have like drawn drawn the cartoon I think it's here on the other other side of this booklet so you know they have actually drawn um, a complete cartoon for the title track of 2112 and there are some extra pictures for the other songs so it's a pretty cool one if you're a visual type then this will make sense to you um, also farewell to kings which i mentioned earlier this is a pretty nice remaster absolutely you've got two bonus discs you've got the whole hammersmith audience concert here which they originally released on this one different stages so here's the one disc version on disc three and then some live material from the 90s but here you have the whole concert and it's remastered and it's wonderful so definitely i think this one is a great remaster i would definitely get it if i was into 70s rush um really cool stuff hemispheres has the same treatment it's pretty nice Unfortunately, um, they haven't included a whole live show from this tour, which I think is a shame. It would have been really nice if they had officially released this um, um, this Hemispheres tour there from Tucson, Arizona, from November 1978. Uh, even with that kind of debatable sound quality, it would be really nice to get it live, but they wanted to offer us something else because this is a pretty well-known bootleg, I guess. So you get not the whole uh, set list, unfortunately. And then what else? Uh, here's Permanent Waves. And they have quite a few live songs here, but not a whole live show. So I would I recommend the St. Louis bootleg. Uh, it sounds brilliant and that's, that feels more like a complete concert, even though they have cut some tracks out. That's that's still a pretty good one. Here, definitely get this one from Moving Pictures. Uh, instead of that live album which we had here, Exit Stays Left, we get two discs worth CD2 and CD3, which is kind of pretty much the complete live show from that tour. Definitely get this one. It's This is also a must-have for a Rush fan. Um, and then what happens after that? Well, um, album-wise, they get a bit softer. So they kind of change into this new wave band with synthesizers and stuff like that. Here's Signals from 1982. I would still say that the songwriting is on point. Yeah, the sound is a bit synthesizery. And you know, new wavy and all that sort of stuff. But but the songs are really good. The songwriting is there. The lyrics are still there. Uh, pretty cool album, I would say. And here's the follow up to it: Grace Under Pressure. Kind of a dark album in the uh, lyrical sense. Musically, pretty bright and synthesizery once again. And you know, but the songwriting is good. Um, hardly any bad so bad songs here. If you can tolerate the sound, then you're gonna like the songs. And here's Power Windows. After this, I think they went downhill with Hold Your Fire, so I'm not into that stuff. And the 90s, um, I don't know, they kind of tried to return to that heavier sound, but it didn't quite convince me, to be honest. 
It took all the way to the final album, Clockwork, Clockwork Angels, in 2012 to get me back on track and get me excited again. This one is the version that came with the magazine with, um, with you know, um, complete, like, a magazine worth of stuff from Rush. Um, lots of different things, 132 pages, so definitely enjoyed getting that one. But the album on itself is pretty good. They do sound kind of old when you're listening to this, but there's surprisingly still that rush and that energy happening on songs like Headlong Flight, for instance, or or um, The Anarchist. Um, lots of, hardly any bad songs here. Um, yeah, definitely cool stuff. I would recommend at least uh, listening to that album once through, even if you're not into modern rush otherwise. Um, then there's also this kind of combination, uh, four discs of the kind of like bootleg concerts. So you can actually hear the Kiel Auditorium permanent wave tour here once again. And then there's stuff from the early tours from the uh, first tour in in USA. I think this might be with the original drummer. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. Maybe this one is already with uh, with Mr. Peart. Uh, but there's stuff from the second tour uh, from 1975, uh, December 74 and April 1975. So it's really good and it's kind of like radio quality stuff. So it's not perfect, but it's enjoyable to listen to if you like early rush, definitely. Uh, I would recommend getting it. And then, of course, there are these box sets. Um, this one is the second part, so this one should be the first one, uh, where you actually get, um, get the four first albums plus that live album and here the four following albums uh, and the live album so all the early stuff is here there's also part three but I'm not a fan of hold your fire so I don't have that then something else um, I've shown you the vinyls the box sets and the CDs here are some DVDs Moving Pictures, um, sorry, Exit States Left DVD. Uh, not the whole show, unfortunately. I think this is about 50 minutes or so. But it's kind of cool. There are also these uh, short um, clips, audio clips from Neil Peart telling you about the backstory of the songs. And it's really, really concise, but it's good stuff from the 1981 tour or so. You can't really go wrong with that. Uh, they also have released a DVD from the Grace Under Pressure tour. And it's a pretty cool one. Especially when they play The Enemy Within, The Weapon and Witch Hunt. All back to back. Uh, all three parts of Fear that they had released up until that point. As Rush fans know, there's a part four on later on. on I think Vapor Trails. Uh, then here's Rush in Rio from, I guess, 2000s, early 2000s. And then there's a tour that I saw them on, uh, R30. I went to Stockholm. It's the only time I've been abroad and seen a band play live. So definitely a very cool show. They played at least like these small snippets from uh, even their oldest albums. I think there's probably at least one piece of song from every album they had released that, that far. And here's the same one, um, a deluxe DVD version with some guitar picks and other silly stuff like that. And here's a very good document, I would recommend this one as well, Beyond the Lighted Stage. Very fun, especially when they're having dinner at the Huntington Lodge. It's hilarious and you can find it also on YouTube if you don't want to spend any money for that. So yeah, um, there you have it, Rush. It's a crazy band, sorry about the long length of this video, but I guess I'm a bit of a Rush maniac. So, metal up your ass.